Hello and welcome to In the Know, a program of Quincy Access Television. Thank you for joining us. Today we will be chatting with City Clerk Nicole Crispo, talking about the upcoming presidential election. And as we do so many things here, uh, this is being done via Zoom. So Nikki, I wish you were here in the studio. I guess this is the second best thing. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Mark. Good to see you. Always good to see you and to do these programs to uh, keep folks informed about um, what's upcoming, in this case, the presidential election, which is on November 3rd. Let's talk about uh, that. Let's talk about when the polls are open uh, that day. It's no different than other elections. Uh, but when we do talk about that, we'll also get into the early voting and the voting by mail and so on. So first of all, polling. Yes, so um, polling locations will all be open, um, 31 polling locations across our city on November 3rd from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. Um, and we have a lot of options this year um, for voting by mail. The applications, um, the initial applications have all been filled. We put out um, over 20,000 ballots already and uh, we're still taking in applications daily. And we try to um, turn those around within 24 hours and get them uh, back out um, to the requester. And um, we're processing here as much as we can. Um, and, you know, right now we're right up to date um, with the requests and um, we're gonna have early voting starting on Saturday um, that goes for two weeks, right, um, through till October 30th. So starting on October 17th and going to October 30th, uh, we do have two locations. Uh, Saturday and Sunday will be at North Quincy High School in the gymnasium. If you come into the Hunt Street entrance, and um, that'll be Saturday and Sunday, the 17th and 18th, and also on the 24th and 25th. Um, of October from uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at North Quincy High in the in the gymnasium. And then uh, Monday through Friday, we're gonna have um, early voting here at City Hall. And that um, will be in the Great Hall on the second floor in the council chamber from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, um, the 19th through the 23rd, 19th what was it 19th sorry excuse me no, that's okay. um, we all do these it. dates all these dates I, 19 through 23 and 26 through the 30th okay uh, that is on uh, the screen for folks to uh, to reference as you have been talking about that uh, you know one of the things I'm, I'm thinking about is just the complexities of this election and certainly the previous election as well uh, the added uh, concentration on mail-in ballots, early voting. It's a lot to handle, I would imagine. It is. Uh, we saw it coming. We got um, the legislation in, in late July. Um, so we have um, made some changes here at City Hall. Um, we feel um, pretty confident with what we learned in September, bringing it forward to November. Uh, we have checks and balances here. Um, we have um, a drop-off box available 24 hours a day for you to drop your ballot here at City Hall. Um, you can bring your ballot to the early voting locations if you'd like to drop it off there for the two week span. Um, we, we went as far as uh, the council asked us to do an evaluation, which we did and um, brought some things forward that we thought would help residents in the city of Quincy and um, working with the administration, our mayor, of course, who, you know, gives us all the resources we need all the time. And we, we are very thankful for that. Um, and in working with the council, we've um, put out some um, parking spaces in the front of city hall that a five minute parking, if you wish to drop off your ballot, you can just jump out of your car and run it up um, to the drop box. If you're unavailable to get out of your car for whatever reason, your kids are in your car, or um, 
your your physically dis disability um, limited, we can come and get the ballot for you. There's a telephone number at the bottom um, of those parking spaces uh, signs that you can call us and we'll run out and wrap it for you. I do, uh, throughout this whole program, we will be referencing pages from the City of Quincy election website. If you could give that out uh, for folks, because that's a great place to find what we will be talking about here and more. It is. Um, so it's at the quincyma.gov, go to government, go to city clerk and elections. And there you can find applications for absentee ballots, early voting ballots, election results, um, where I vote, am I a registered voter, what party I'm in, it's, and an election guide to fall voting in 2020. That's what I have in front of me, so uh, good job on that. Uh, we'll be kind of going through that a little bit for folks uh, today. Uh, first of all, the last day to register to vote, the 24th of October. Yes, so uh, it, as I was speaking about earlier, um, the mandates changed in late July. We used to have 20 days before the election, and they've changed it to 10. So... Um, on October 24th, it's a Saturday, we will be open at City Hall for um, registering to vote from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the application for that uh, folks can also find online? Yes, that's that's on that um, city election webpage. Um, like again, so it's quincyma.gov, government, city clerk, and then elections, and you'll find all your election needs there. Now, what if people are, I guess, confused, maybe if they're not sure if they're registered to vote? Yep, so all the links are there um, to find out if you're a registered voter. You can also go to the um, um, mass.gov website and um, search elections, and right there you will find Secretary of Galvin's website and again easy to use also there which is new is a portal there's a portal there if you wish to um register for um an early voting ballot by mail you can do it all through that portal on that website we do have those images i believe up on screen now uh, secretary uh, william galvin is right there at the top but with the uh, information beneath uh, talk about uh, voting by mail. Uh, there is a deadline, obviously, for that as well, and that, I believe, is the 28th? Yes. So um, 28th at 5 p.m. So if, if um, you wish to vote by um, EV mail, you certainly can. We just need that application by 5 p.m. on the 28th to get that ballot out to you so that you can get it back to us um, at least, at the very least, postmarked by uh, the third. I'm going to look at some of the frequently asked questions. That's a good way to go because these are the questions that um, most often people have. Uh, if I applied for a vote by mail ballot, can I appear to vote in person at an early voting site or at the polls on election day? Yes, you can. As long as you haven't returned your ballot here and uh, we've got we've started um, preparing we're doing central tabulation here in quincy so once we start central tabulation um you'll have a unless you bring your ballot with you so we know that you didn't vote um we we would suggest you wait until election day when we have a new list um available um because it will say that you have an ev ballot if you already voted um you can't. So let me try to explain it. So if you wish to vote by mail and then you decide you want to go to early voting, you may. But if you already returned that ballot as voted, then you can't. Okay. Once it's received by your office, it's, again, you can't at that point. Right. That's when we um, put it in as received by a date and and then we're not going to let you vote in person 
okay, if I vote early in person, can, can I appear to vote in person at the polls on election day? No. No. So your answer is no. You've already voted. We've put your name in the database as that ballot is received. So no. And then we touched upon this a bit. Uh, when and how is an early voter's ballot cast? Okay, so we do have central tabulation in the city of Quincy, which means that um, after the last day to register to vote, which is October 24th, um, we will then start to process the early voting ballots, and that is um, to get them ready for, um, a, for early tabulation. Now, when I say early tabulation, nothing is looked at, um, no results, are given, but they are essentially tabulated. I'm glad you said that because people may be concerned, especially nationally, uh, the, um, the talk about the safety of uh, the vote. And with that said, uh, maybe talk about uh, what the city of Quincy did in the previous election and what is planned in this election to make sure that every vote is, um, is a secret cast. Right. So um, every, everybody that um, election officials do open the envelopes, do process ballots. But, you know, I can assure you that there are 21,000 ballots and uh, we all are election officials here. We take an oath and, you know, we take our responsibility very seriously. And so for that, um, you know, it it doesn't matter to us. What matters to us at the end is getting the election results out to the public, and that's first and foremost. But nothing is looked at um, as far as election results before um, 8 p.m. on election night. So once we get the data from the tabulators, we then um, put all that in, then take the, um, the data from the um, early voting central tabulation facility, plug that in, and then you'll get your election results. So what you see at the polls on election night is essentially not what the end result is going to be because we do have that data from central tabulation that does get um, import, imported into the computer on election night. So with that said, what's the timeline to getting results? So um, th that's a little different this time around um, than the primary because uh, we do have an extra three days to receive mail that's postmarked November 3rd. We go till November 6th to get postmarked mail. And so for that, um, everything that we receive on election day and um, those three days after will essentially be tabulated on November 9th. And then that is, um, that is when we're going to um, add to the unofficial number. So on election night, you'll get a number. It'll be the central tabulation and it'll be the polling places. Then, um, so that'll go up unofficial. Then on November 9th, we will do the tally of what we received in the mail and um, overseas ballots. And we will give an official um, result to the Secretary of State by November 18th. Let's go over the ballot that uh, will be on screen for folks in just a moment. There are contested races and there are two questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we're, we're lucky that um, it is only one ballot. <laughs> That's a big thing. Um, so it's front and back, um, contested races on the front and ballot questions on the back. Um, and, you know, please go ahead and do your homework. Um, the Secretary of State put out the red book that has all the information in it. We have the sample ballots on our website. 
Um, you can certainly look at the information provided there. We'll have the call of elections out throughout the city at some of the banks and, and uh, supermarkets um, available. They're all double, um, they all have the questions and the polling places available and what will be on the ballot um, distributed. We will be um, putting out a lot of um, information. Obviously you have it. Uh, we will get it to the Quincy Sun, to the Patriot Ledger and to the World Journal. Um, and that'll be translated in Chinese um, as well. And and so I think that, um, you know, the information that we have on our website, the information that you can get from your local newspapers and the World Journal, um, you know, we've put out an all out effort um, to get our residents in the know. I think one of the things you said, and I know you've said this in previous uh, preview shows, is uh, just know ahead of time before you go to the polls, especially if you're going to the polls and you're not voting by mail. Uh, know ahead of time so you're not spending a lot of time reading these, uh, well, questions, I suppose, uh, or, you know, the list of candidates, but certainly the questions because those are quite descriptive on the ballot. They are. And, and, you know, you have misleading ads and, and you think you know, and then you start to read it, you know, and I know myself, you know, um, I like to know before I go to the polls because right to repair, it, and then you hear, well, we already have right to repair. I'm confused. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, it is important to know before you go that red book that Secretary Galvin puts out is a great resource. It also has a sort of voter registration in it if you need it. Um, you know, if you've moved within the last six months, it's important that you check uh, on the website where you vote. And there's plenty of time. Uh, we have 10 more days before voter registration um, shuts down. So that's an important thing to know where you vote as well as know what you're voting for. Well, let's go over that because uh, the polling places will be up on screen for folks uh, throughout the city of Quincy. There are some changes. So talk about the changes, but once again, all of the polling locations will be listed on screen. Yes, so um, we do have two changes um, down in Ward 2. Um, the building 1000 Southern Artery um, was a polling place for years and years. We're very thankful um, for that, but um, we were asked if we could move on um, due to the COVID-19, which we were happy to do. We moved right next door to the Clifford Marshall School, Ward 2, Precinct 2, and Ward 2, Precinct 3A have both moved to the Clifford Marshall School on 200 Moody Street, right, right next door, adjacent to 1000 Southern Artery. We were happy um, to have that location available. Um, there will be voting in the gym there. And um, we, we spoke with the um, principal there and um, he was happy to have us. And we're very grateful to um, the superintendent and to um, the principal there for accommodating the residents. As we go through the rest of the pages that are on screen, I think right now we are at Ward 3 and Ward 4. We have, of course, Ward 5 and Ward 6 to get up there as well. So just as those are on the screen, talk about uh, the preparations at the polling sites as far as uh, sanitizing. Uh, we naturally, we all need to wear masks. Yes, so um, we ask you definitely to wear your mask. We will have masks at every polling place if you do forget to wear your mask. Um, we are taking all the proper precautions for PPE. Social distancing is a, is a big one, of course, um, with the six feet um, of distance between each person. We ask you to be patient uh, at the polling places. Um, we did remove the check out station. So um, to alleviate any backups within the polling location itself. So you're going to come in um, same way you did it before, check in um, with the paper book 
and uh, get your ballot, go to your um, your polling stand there, um, fill out your ballot. We will come around right after you and sanitize it for the next person. We will sanitize our pens. We have um, we have all the um, proper PPE. We have hand sanitizer. We have Lysol spray. We have um, a, a, a big plexiglass um, petition between you and the check-in. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that if you plan on going to the polls, you know, and everybody takes the proper precautions, you know, you'll be safe. People can bring their own pens if they would like. They can, of course they can. They can um, bring a black, a blue, or a flare pen. I do not suggest a Sharpie because it might bleed through, um, but a flare pen is fine. Um, if you haven't voted in a while, um, you may want to bring your ID. Um, maintain the social distancing and keep your ballot dry. If you sanitize your hands before you take your ballot, just make sure your hands are dry uh, before you go uh, put it into the machine. Right, I know we all walk around with um, hand sanitizer on our hands so often. It's on my steering wheel, it's over here. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a story, um, uh, totally unconnected to elections, but a story about um, uh, kids at a fire pit that, um, right, because this is flammable yeah. stuff. And uh, right. that was a danger. So we are walking around with this um, often not completely dry on our hands when we're uh, going on to the next thing. Yes. Yeah, so and, and there'll be hand sanitizer on the way out as well of the polling place. So um, that's my only thing. Just don't have your hands wet when you take the ballot. It just it, the, the machines don't like it very much. The last thing uh, I guess we haven't uh, addressed is absentee ballots. Talk about that process. Absentee ballots have been mailed out as well. Um, we had almost a thousand requests in the city and they're all out. Um, if you wish to take an absentee ballot, you may right up until noontime the day before the election. The thing about the absentee ballot that's different from the early voting ballot is you do still have to have an excuse whether it's a physical disability, um, you're going to be out of the city on election day or for religious beliefs. As we close, I just uh, from the previous election, was there anything that was learned in your department uh, that um, you might now do differently or pretty much was everything prior just going to carry over to this presidential election? Well, we, we did learn um, some new some new techniques in the office um, to, you know, once you start something new, like the, the early voting um, by mail, we got so many requests. So, um, you know, learning to um, be sure that we dot all our I's, cross all our T's, make a copy of everything, uh, every request that we sent out, we make a copy of the, um, of the mailing label so that we know that we mailed it on this day at this time post office picked it up at this time we're you know keeping logs making sure that um all of our processes are being met and um the, with the five minute parking out front of city hall i hope people will utilize that um to drop off their ballots here and, you know, we do wish we could have more drop-off locations, but the first and foremost is the integrity of the vote and the ballot. And we don't have enough resources right now to have drop-off um, spots all over the city, not to mention that when this drop-off box came, um, became popular, there was a backlog of requests. So uh, with everybody in the Commonwealth asking for them, we were lucky to get one. <laughs> so, so we are grateful for that. And it seems to be working out well. Um, over the weekend, the ballots went out. Um, Tuesday morning, we emptied it. There were 350 ballots in there. 
so people are taking advantage. Of course, presidential elections, uh, the number of voters always ticks up. It does, yes. So we had a 38, almost 39 percent in the primary, which was, you know, a good solid number. Um, but we do expect um, that we're looking at a 75 percent turnout for November. So a lot of things happening across the country. So certainly, I believe uh, folks will exercise their right to vote and uh, do get out on November 3rd or participate in early voting, whether it's by mail or in person. Yeah, so um, one more thing I just wanted to um, say is on Saturday and Sunday, I think we are expecting rain on Saturday. So we're going to go down to North Quincy High on Friday, walk um the um, the facility and see about um, maybe perhaps setting something up so that if people are in line, they will be um, inside, probably a, a line leading into the cafeteria. So we'll um, we'll be sure that we're taking you know all the precautions that we can for people to be um, in line if if that's the case. Sounds like all bases are covered, so uh, good job there. Uh, we will uh, touch base on Election Day, I hope, and, and uh, chat a bit. But uh, between now and then, a lot to do. Uh, certainly, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, chat with me. It's always enjoyable. Hopefully, the next election, you will be in studio here. But uh, till then. Thank you, Mark. Take care. And thank you, you at too. home. You have been watching the Election Preview Program of Quincy Access Television. Quincy Access Television's In the Know. Please continue to watch Quincy Access TV for more locally produced programming.